some of the uh, people you work with or the people you study with will ask you questions about Islam, difficult questions, so you need to know the basics to be able to answer. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent all prophets from Adam alayhi salam to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi with the same message. And the essence of this message is have faith in one God and be a good person. Every single prophet says exactly the same thing. Even the Christians and the Jews, the books they have, the Old Testament, the New Testament, they say exactly the same thing. If you look at the Ten Commandments, and this is what I always tell them if I'm ever invited to the church, just look at the Ten Commandments, the foundations of the message of Musa, the foundations of the message of Isa and all prophets. The first four of the Ten Commandments say what? Well, don't worship one God. There's only one God. Don't worship other gods. From five to ten, don't kill, don't lie, don't steal. Be a good person. And we have the Ten Commandments repeated in the Quran at least twice. One is Surah Al-Islam Al-Qadr Al-Qadr al Tell the end of the ayah. And also in Surah Al-An'am Qul Ta'ala Al-Atul Ma'harum Rabbukum Alaykum. It says exactly the same thing. So every religion is based, or actually every faith is based on two things. Your relationship with Allah and your relationship with the people. The first one is called Ibadat, or theology, acts of worship, and so on and so forth, the belief system. And the second half is your relationship with the people, Mu'amalat. So a lot of people differ with regards to the first half, your relationship with Allah. Some, and some, some people believe there's only one God. Some people believe all there are three. Some people say, well, we believe in a thousand gods. Some people will say, well, does, God doesn't even exist. So every faith has a different perception of God, and their acts of worship are different. Not everyone fasts or prays like us. Everybody is different. But when you come to the second half, Mu'amalat, the relationship with the people, every single faith says exactly the same thing. Every single faith. So the Muslims, the Christians, the Jews, the Hindus, the Buddhists, even atheists, they believe the same thing. You have to be honest, you have to be kind, you have to be sincere, you have to be generous. Everybody says exactly the same thing. But when it comes to the first half theology, different people have different uh, ideas and different beliefs. So we need to focus, and this is what I did in the pamphlet, I focused on the second half. That the things we have in common with you, when it comes to global ethics, or dealing with other people, we exactly have the same beliefs and we can work together in this, in this regard. As I said, every single prophet is exactly the same thing. Have faith in one God, worship one God, and be a good person. No prophet ever called his religion or his faith anything other than this. Have faith in one God and be a good person. Submission. When they, I tell them, when you read in your books, did Ibrahim ever call his religion or his faith Ibrahimism? The answer is no. What about David? Did he ever call his faith Davidism? The answer is no. What about Musa Did he ever call his faith Judaism in the Bible, for example? No, the word Judaism does not exist in the Bible. Did Isa call his religion Christianity? The answer is no, because the word Christianity is not even in the Bible. All of them said the same thing, faith in one God, be a good person, khalas. In Arabic we call this Islam, or submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it, khalas. So how come if every single prophet from Adam to Muhammad said exactly the same thing, and we know from authentic hadith and Bukhari and other books of hadith, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent over 124,000 prophets from Adam to Muhammad So if this is the case, and every single prophet said exactly the same thing, why different people worship different things? Well, there are different explanations. We'll give you two of them. The first one, the Prophet says in the Hadith and Bukhari and other books of Hadith, كُلُّ مَوْلُودٍ يُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَ so the Prophet says in an authentic hadith that every human being is born by default, pre-formatted, to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one God, and to be a good person. But it is the parents who change everything. So every single person, or the great majority of human beings in this world, 
They, they just follow their parents. Inna wajadna abahana ala ummati wa inna ala asarihim muqtadu. And this is what Allah says in the Quran. Whenever you ask someone who has a different belief, why do you believe so? They say, we found our parents doing the same thing, so we just walk in their footsteps. So if someone is born in China, then most likely they would be Buddhist because this is what the majority of people believe. If someone is born in Morocco or Egypt, most likely they would be Muslim. If someone is born in Europe, atheist. If someone is born in the U.S., Protestant. If someone is born in Canada, most likely he or she will be uh, Catholic. So people just follow blindly. Even if the beliefs of their parents doesn't make anything. Or it doesn't make any sense. They just follow without any conviction or common sense. They just follow it. And as I say in English, common sense is not very common. People just, they just follow uh, blindly. So this is one reason. Also, if we read about history, most people have not been happy with the idea of believing in a God they can't see. Islam is probably the only religion that teaches that Allah is different from you. The Creator is different from the creation. So Al-Khaliq, you can't see him because you are not equipped in this dunya. And Allah says in the Quran, you will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But most people, they, they didn't accept this. They can't believe in an invisible God. They have to see God in front of them because most people, they like to uh, believe in things they experience with their five senses. So they need a God they can see, they can touch, they can relate to. So what people have done from the times of the Romans and the Greeks and the ancient Egyptians till this day, what they do, they put a face on God. Whether it's a human face, like Jesus or Buddha, or whether it's an animal face, like the cow in India or the elephant in China, or even the shaitan, the face of the devil, you read about uh, the church of the devil worshippers in the U.S., they put the face of the devil on, on God because this is something they can't see. Read about ancient Egypt, they have thousands of gods. The god that had the head of a crocodile, hyena, snake, ancient Greek, ancient Rome. And this is why when the people of Musa when they left Egypt and they were surrounded by people who worship these different gods, the statues and all these things, they just crossed the, the uh, sea فَقَالُوا أَعِنَ اللَّهَ جَوَزْنَا بِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ الْبَحْرَ فَأَتَوْا عَلَى قَوْمٍ يَعْكُفُونَ عَلَى أَصْنَامٍ لَهُمْ قَالَ يَا مُوسَى اجْعَلْ لَنَا إِلَهًا كَمَا لَهُمْ آلِهَةٌ وَسُورَةُ الْبَقَرَةِ لَنْ نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ حَتَّى نَرَى اللَّهَ جَرًا So they told Musa alayhi salam when they, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them from the sea and drowned the people of Pharaoh, they saw some people worshipping a statue and they said, Musa, we need a God like this. He says, what is this? Allah just saved you from death and you ask for a statue to worship, what is this? Okay, later they said, okay, we will worship Allah, but we want to see Allah face to face. In Surah Al-Baqarah. Because they have been influenced by the people who have these uh, beliefs. So these are the two reasons why different people worship different things. But as we said at the beginning, that every single prophet came with the message of Islam, and every single prophet is called Muslim in the Quran. So Ibrahim alayhi salam said, I'm Muslim. Yusuf alayhi salam said, I'm Muslim. Isa, Musa, all of them. Why? Because they believed in one Allah, one God, and they were good people. So this is the essence of the message of Islam. So what we want people to know, to know the basics of the religion. If they ask you, don't debate with them about anything, because some of the brothers, when they ask you a question about Islam, or what do you think about Isa, some of us, when we start a debate, we start a debate with them, and you will say, how do you believe in this book and it was corrupted over time? Or how come you worship Isa and you never said I'm God? You guys, you don't think, you have no whatever. When people are offended, they will never listen to you. They already know what they believe. They know what they believe in their books, they know what they believe in their, they are told in their places of worship, so they know. So what they want from you is to tell you, or to tell them, your perception, what you believe. Now talk to them about Islam, talk to them about Iman and the belief in the different prophets. We're told, of course, Arkana Bissan, the five pillars of Islam,
on the belief in one God, and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi is a prophet. At the time of Isa, the Shkalim al-Shahad, the Kalim al-Tawheed was, I believe in Allah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, and I believe that Isa is the prophet of Allah. At the time of Musa, same thing, I believe that there is only one, and, and, and Musa is the prophet of Allah. So when someone takes Shahad and they say, I believe in Muhammad Sallallahu because if you recognize the last one of them, you recognize all of them. So when you take an oath to become a citizen of Canada, and you take the oath, and the picture of the queen is there, Elizabeth II, if you recognize the last queen, it means you accept or recognize all of them. It's exactly the same thing. Maybe you can use this example if they challenge you. Then, of course, we believe in Muhammad Sallallahu as a prophet. He never claimed anything to be anything other than a prophet. Some people think that we worship Muhammad Sallallahu Some people think that the Quran is a biography, Sira of Muhammad Sallallahu Like the Quran only talks about him. Some of them are shocked when we tell them that Muhammad Sallallahu is mentioned by name in the Quran only four times, and Isa is mentioned by name 24, 25 times by name. Maryam salam, there is a chapter named after her in the Quran. There is no chapter named after her in the Bible. She is, she is mentioned by name in the Bible 18 times. In the Quran she is mentioned by name 34 times. Twice the number of times she is mentioned in the Bible. There are some ayat in the Quran that mention Isa salam, like in Surah al amr where it talks about Maryam and Isa salam, in Allah as-Safaqi wa Taharaqi wa Safaqi ala nisa'i al-alameen where it says, "Mashumku bi kalimatil bin Musmu al Masih al Isa bin Mar Wajiha fi dunya wa akhiratu min mukarrabi." These ayat that talk and praise Isa and his wife, they have no equivalence in the Bible, none whatsoever. So when people read this or they hear this, they are shocked. So these are the things you need to focus on. Of course, we talk to them about salah and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa taala. And when you make a kuwar or make sujood, they ask us, "Why do you do this?" And we tell them this is exactly what your prophets did in your book in the Bible. When you read in the Old Testament about uh, Ibrahim and Musa wa Harun, they made rukur when they prayed. When you read about Isa and Jesus in the New Testament, when he made salah, he put his face on the ground and made sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we do, we exactly our salah includes all the movements that the prophets did in their time. So, we're very close. All you need to do is go back to the original teachings of your book and you'll see exactly what it says. We're doing exactly the same things that Musa and Isa and Ibrahim and Muhammad والسلام, they did. So we're not doing anything new. Then fasting, siyam, Musa والسلام, and Isa والسلام, they fasted during the day and they ate at night. Just like Muslims, they gave salah. Riba was not permissible for them. Uh, pork was not permissible for them. Musa alayhi salam says, it's filthy, you're not allowed to touch it. And Isa alayhi salam said, I came to follow the law of Musa alayhi salam. So he didn't teach anything different. So we have so many things in common. And we keep telling them that when, if Isa alayhi salam and his mother come today to visit Canada, they would probably stop them at the airport because Isa would look exactly like a Muslim and his mother would look exactly like a Muslim sister. They will relate more to Muslims than they relate to anybody else. And of course, the Hajj. When you talk about a Canadian kind of man who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they always say, well, you guys say, call your God Allah and we call our God Jehovah, so you worship a different God. But this is not true. You ask him, what did Musa السلام, in his language of Hebrew and what did Isa, Jesus, in his language of Aramaic call Allah when they prayed? Did they say Jehovah? Of course not, because they didn't speak Latin or Greek. Musa السلام, spoke Hebrew. And Hebrew and Aramaic, the language of Isa السلام, and Arabic, they are called Semitic languages. They come from the same, uh, they have the same root or the same moral origins. So Musa السلام, in his language of Hebrew, he called Allah Eloh. Eloh in Hebrew means God, like the word Ilah. And he used it sometimes in the plural, Elohim, to show respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like when we say Allahumma, Elohim, Allah is exactly the same thing. 
Isa alayhi salam spoke Aramaic and the word he used for Allah in Aramaic was the word Allah, A-L-A-H-A. -A -A. You can Google it. So they used precisely and exactly the same words that we Muslims use. And plus the word Allah in Arabic, of course, Arab Muslims and Arab Christians and Arab Jews, they say Allah when they pray. They don't say God or Jehovah. They use exactly the same word. Plus, the Arabic word Allah is unique because it doesn't have a plural. In English, you have gods, goddess, and all these things. And the Arabic word Allah is not masculine and it is not feminine, it is neutral. So, the word he, when you translate the Quran, you say he, you don't mean he, you, don't, you mean neutral. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a he and he is not a she. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is neutral. And of course, we believe in the Malaika, the angel of Jibreel We believe in the prophets. We believe in Musa, we believe in Isa, and we respect them the same. We are told in the Quran, لا نفرق بين أحد من الرسل. We respect all of them the same. Whenever the name of Musa or Isa or Ibrahim is mentioned, we say عليه السلام, عليه السلام. We name our children after them. I'm sure in this masjid, we have Musa, the brother, Brother Musa, we have Brother Isa, I know we have Isa, we have many Ibrahim, uh, we have Dawood, we have Sulaiman, different names. We have Sa'ad. So we love these prophets just like we love Muhammad Sassan, and we name our children after them. And I'm sure there is a sister in the back who is called Maryam too, Mary. So we love these prophets and we name our children after them as a sign of love and respect. Of course, we believe in the original teachings given to prophets, like the Torah given to Musa السلام, the Gospel given to Isa, and the Psalms, the Zabur given to Dawood السلام. We believe in the scrolls, the Sahuf of uh, Ibrahim, and we believe in the Quran, the original ones, not the ones that have been changed over time. And the Quran is different because it was written down entirely at the time of Rasulullah It was not collected in one volume, but every was written and was memorized by the Prophet and thousands of his Sahaba and we still have the original in Arabic. Anyone else, they don't have this because their books were revealed in an oral form. So Musa and Isa السلام, they were teaching like giving speeches like this khutbah but nothing was written, they didn't give a hard copy. The Prophet and is different, everything was written and he gave us a hard copy when he left. So we have exactly the same thing. If we disagree on the meaning or when we translate the Quran, we have the original, we go back. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ali bin Abi
Islam, we'll talk about jihad, we'll talk about sharia, because I'm sure some of your friends or colleagues will ask you these questions. What we want from you, and this is the most important thing, and I conclude with this, inshallah, you need to be proud of who you are. If you come from, yani if you are Pakistani or if you are Indian, if you are Arab or you're from Afghanistan, if you are Turkish, if you are Kurdish, if you come from Europe, if you come from Latin America or North America, you need to be proud of who you are. You need to teach your kids your own language. Urdu, speak Urdu at home, speak Kurdish at home, speak Turkish or Arabic or any language you speak. Teach your kids, be proud of your culture and your language. If they go to school, inshallah, they will pick up English very easy. So make sure that they are bilingual. Be proud of your culture. Unless there's something in your culture that contradicts Islam, then you need to leave it to the side. And also, you need to be proud of your faith. A lot of people, they hide themselves. They don't want anyone to know that they are Muslim. They are ashamed. If their name is Muhammad, they just say, oh, Mo. What is it? Zachariah, Zach, uh, whatever. They just uh, change their names. Uh, Hussein, Michael. What is this, man? You need to be proud of who you are. You need to... Short, they use it for short. Well, I know for short, but Arnold Schwarzenegger never called himself R. He just says the whole thing. It's like two lines to write his name. So you need to be proud of Muhammad Sassan, if this is your name. You need to be proud of who you are. Who are you? Why are you ashamed? I mean, everybody is different in this country. Everybody comes from a different country. So you need to be proud of who you are. Be visible and try to be successful because people always look up to the successful. Nobody looks at the losers, only the successful ones, people will look up to them and imitate them. And try to make doubt. If you do something good and people appreciate it, like if you are a cab driver and somebody forgets or leaves some money in your car, give it to them and when they ask you why did you give us back the money, anybody else could have taken it, you tell them, well, this is what Islam teaches. Well, Laya, this is the best doubt. So be proud. Keep some pamphlets in your taxi, if people ask you about Islam, just give them some out. If you are a doctor, put some pamphlets or some books about Islam in your clinic. If you go to somebody else's clinic or work or business, they always keep the Bibles and things and literature. So you should do the same thing. You should be proud of who you are. Let's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the man 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 and اللهم لا تجعل في هذا اليوم العظيم مشهد إلا فرطا ولا همدا إلا فرشا ولا مريضا إلا شفيتا ولا ميتا إلا وحيدا اللهم اشفع طالنا حبيب الله وصلى الصحة والعافية ونعزى الله سبحانه وتعالى to give us and to give us sincerity in everything we say and do and ونعزى الله سبحانه وتعالى to give us the recovery to our brother حبيب الله and to give him a long and healthy life and to forgive us in anything of our behaviors and mistake and forgetfulness ونعزى الله سبحانه وتعالى to show his blessings from those who built this masjid and those who maintain it, which is that Allah Khair and Allah Khair.